today we're going to be looking at another magazine from the lovely 1970s. It is the December 1972 Practical Electronics. It's the Christmas of 1972. Where were you in Christmas of De December 1972? And there's something that we're going to build in the video today, and that is the Hooting Owl. Purely because where the schematic doesn't look like it's going to sound like a Hooting Owl. So I want to see if it actually sounds like a Hooting Owl. Every single magazine before January of 1973, so this is December 1972, which is actually the last one that it doesn't have, it doesn't have a contents page. How mad is that? How mad is that? Anyway, let's have a look at some of the lovely gems that we have today. So as usual, it is littered with advertisements. Are you all right for jacks? Ooh, 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 ooh. There's a there's equivalents that are modern, but this is a build your own turntable. It's uh, pretty cool. I wonder if there's any that exist in the box still like that, just sitting around. Ooh, A.R. Sugden and Co. Engineers Limited, Market Street, Brick house, very nice. Yeah, I saw this one. It's like I still don't quite understand the crux of the uh, of the uh, advertisement, but of course it is very of the times where you know. <laughs> I'm sure he'd like a steam iron. I'm sure she'd like an avometer. Oh dear. Anyway, this is what I wanted to boil down to. I didn't realise it was actually so far in. Like we didn't really cover much of the magazine. Most of it was just advertisements. The thing is, um, uh, there's another thing I've noticed with Practical Electronics, the actual width of the uh, issues varies quite massively, but the actual meat of the magazine doesn't. So it seems that some have more advertisements than others. So this is something that piqued my interest when I looked at the circuit and how it was sold in the magazine. <laughs> it's an owl hat. <laughs> It looks as much as an owl as I'm expecting it to sound like an owl. So this project describes some simple circuits for producing sounds which somewhat resemble the cries of a small animal. <laughs> it should interest readers who are looking for something amusing which is easily constructed and can be used to intrigue their friends. The owl described here is just one of a large number of possible variations of the basic design and makes an ideal present for children or the girlfriend. Or the boyfriend, whatever, what, yeah. Because the idea is so versatile, it can be made simple for beginners or rather more complex for advanced constructors. In fact, this is a very good first project as there are no problems with tolerances or setting up and only the cheapest components need be used. Oh yeah. The finished animal can be made extremely attractive if a little care is taken. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely attractive. That's what they say. The basic element in, in all of the units is the A-stable multivibrator. This gets to the crux of the matter. This is what sort of attracted me to this because I haven't done a video on A-stable multivibrators and they're just they're just quite simple and just fun and if you haven't made them before, they're just they're interesting. In the simplest design, as shown in figure one, so this is figure one, and in here there is one A-stable multivibrator. If you know what an A-stable multivibrator is, then you probably know what you're looking at. If you don't, then probably not sure. So if we take this off, you'll see this circuit right here. If you search up A-stable multivibrator, you'll get a picture of this. It's basically fighting each other and uh, turning each other on and off via these capacitors that get charged. It's funny because when it gets turned on initially, both capacitors get charged, but thankfully due to tolerances of living in the real world, uh, these uh, the capacitors and all of the uh, components aren't perfect. One of them end up, ends up winning the fight within the first few nanoseconds and starts and makes the other one discharge. And basically what that means is this transistor turns on and then charges up this capacitor, which ends up turning that this off, and then it just, it, they bounce back and forwards, turning on and off and on and off, and this causes an oscillation. So that's that's a quick and very stupid description of what the A-stable multivibrator is. A-stable meaning it isn't stable. A-stable and multivibrator because it's, um, multivibrational. The bit that caught my interest with this with this magazine and what they were selling is if you cascade free multivibrators, you basically get the vocal cords of an owl. <laughs> I really, 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 I don't think this is going to sound like an owl. It 
So now I've breadboarded out figure one, which is just a simple ace stable multi vibrator circuit, which requires two transistors. They're basically fighting each other, you know, like pit bulls to, to kind of win oscillation supremacy. And then, yeah, basically they don't, they never each win. So they just keep on bouncing back and forth, which actually makes an oscillation. And if we listen to it, if we listen to it here, it's, a, it's just a, it's just an oscillator. Ah! On the live stream that's happening right now, I've just been chatting to Crucifix. One of his machines, the, which is based on the Seat Lombard rolls, rolls uh, his rolls too, is actually a similar circuit to this. It's basically eight multi-vibrators uh, that are cascaded into each other with control voltages into them. Uh, I'm not sure whether his sounds like a hooting owl, so I'm quite interested to see whether this one sounds like a hooting owl. So let's let's keep on building. Oh my god, I don't believe I didn't record that. You In the live stream, I just plugged it in, not expecting it to sound anything like an owl. But, props to whoever made the hooting owl circuit. Let's just, just have a listen to this. Wow. <laughs> that does sound a lot more like an owl than I was actually expecting it to sound like an owl. Like props to Practical Electronics here. A dot R cuff. That sounds sort of like an owl. I'm just going to adjust the uh, the potentiometers here. Instead of these resistors right here, which are the ones that actually govern the uh, the discharge, I've, I've changed one of them on each of the circuit with a potentiometer, which means that I can adjust the rate at which the transistors kind of, you know, bounce between each other. So now, hopefully, we can make different different owls. It's like an owl got stuck in a car and became the first car alarm and somebody went, wow, that sounds like a good sound for a car alarm. And then they designed every single car alarm after that owl that got stuck in the car. There's another part to this uh, circuit uh, that I haven't yet described. And that is, if you look right here, you see this image, this tiny little image right here, that's a circle that has got the battery there. I'm using 12 volts, but this is using nine volts. And then there's, and then there's a little bit of, it looks like, whatever it looks, it looks like a circle with some stuff in it. Well, basically this is what they're, de what they're describing here is a mercury switch. And what a mercury switch is, is a bit of glass with liquid mercury inside when it gets to a certain angle it actually makes a connection between the two wires this right here is a mercury switch if you look closely well you don't even need to look closely you can see that that is full of mercury if I smash it it's like a little bit of a shot glass so I can have a nice shot of mercury whenever I'm feeling a bit fruity of course I wouldn't because that is poisonous to a human being but yeah here we go this is a mercury switch so what it does is there's two contacts there's one here it's a little bit broken and there's another one here this was uh, given to me uh, by nervous squirrel uh, he he came up he came across a fair few and he, he gave me a couple because they're just interesting oddities and basically they don't make because they don't make a connection until the mercury goes over both of these two contact points like this and this apparently is made well this this is what the hooting owl uses which is great for being around kids a mercury switch in what is a kid's toy 1970s for you so it's basically a tilt switch for the owl get the crocodile clip plop that onto here it's right there pop that there so now imagine this mercury switch is inside a child's toy called the Hooting Owl in the 1970s. Oh, I've wired it up wrong. <laughs> How cool is that? And before we build this into a permanent enclosure to put inside the museum, I figured we should just have a look at what the magazine suggests you should do and build it like, because it is awfully creepy. Look at that. 
Look at that owl. That is not an owl. That is a nightmare. <laughs> it's awful. And then this is the disemboweled uh, uh, owl. It's been made from a custard tin. And then the circuit is here. Uh, I can't quite see the mercury switch. I think the mercury switch is just there. And then the speaker uh, sits up at the top, just underneath its woolly hat, because every owl gets a bit cold and requires a woolly hat. So that is the hooting owl. What a project. I, I, I was really underestimating it because I did this video in the expectation that it wasn't going to sound anything like an owl and it sounded a lot more like an owl than I was expecting. Interesting. Fast forwards a couple of days and this is done. Yeah, it's the Hooting Owl project in a box. You'll see it's got googly eyes on the knobs. Uh, this was slightly inspired by Klaus Klerwerk on the Look Mum No Computer forum who uh, puts googly eyes on all of their modules. But I thought it quite suited the idea for this one because, you know, it's just a bit of fun. So what I did was I had the breadboard here and I basically copied the breadboard onto the stripboard layout. I was thinking of doing a stripboard layout of this, however, uh, it doesn't really work doing stripboard layouts retrospectively as I, I would have done it much differently to this. Uh, this was made up as I went and it's rather messy. My suggestion is build it on breadboard and then build each of the A stable motor vibrators one by one on the strip board and testing the output as you go. And you get this dodgy amalgamation. It's not the most pleasant of layouts. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mess. Over here is a little speaker amplifier. It saves the finickety circuits and stuff that you require for making that stuff. So it's just like a cheap little thing. You can get a five of these five of these mono speaker amplifiers for 10 pounds on eBay, which is where I found them. And this connects over to this speaker, which is glued with some very strong glue onto the back. And then it's actually got some air holes on the back for it to speak. The box actually acts like a filter, like a smoothing filter. And it actually makes it sound quite nice. And it's got quite a lot of body because of the actual enclosure itself, which is just your standard die cast powder coated enclosure. I got this from Rapid Electronics, which do this uh, specific die cast enclosure in a number of sizes. I also added a button to it which is connected between the power supply input and the circuit. So this basically turns it on and off and on and off. And then there's an LED on here as well, which is wired to one of the outputs on the transistors. I, I can't remember, I can't remember which actually. Oh yeah, I just wired it straight to the potentiometers over here. And basically those little uh, blue potentiometers on the breadboard are swapped with these big chunky uh, sized ones that are panel mount, uh, as you can see. It's not neat, but it does the job. I need to drill a couple of holes here to mount it on to the wall and we'll fire we'll see that in a little bit first let's just have a see what it sounds like <laughs> i mean it sort of sounds like a little owl i mean sort of <laughs> it sounds enough like a little owl to justify it i guess Anyway, let's get this put on the wall. There it is, the hooting owl is now on the wall. It's right below the bouncing ball simulator. The uh, oscilloscope is off, of course. There's no reason for it to be on right this second. And uh, yeah, it's got the documentation next to it. And hopefully there will be a number of other little projects around like this, like self-enclosed uh, little, you know, push and try things. So uh, yeah. It sort of sounds like an owl, so there we go, the, the hooting owl. So that wraps up this video on Practical Electronics, December 1972. I've included a link below of the archive of Practical Electronics and also December 1972. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's literally on the internet. Some kind of people have uploaded every single copy of Practical Electronics, but there's nothing quite like flicking through the real thing, like I will be doing in many upcoming videos. And talking about upcoming videos, I'm about to start a live stream over on my Patreon that is going to look at the magazine for next week and also start building and breadboarding the circuit uh, for the next video. And if you're watching this video after it's gone up, well, the live stream is still available to watch over there and there'll be an edited down version like this one coming out next week on this YouTube channel. 
There's that and much more content over on Patreon as well because obviously the more support the bigger and better I can make this museum and venture like that because all the money goes straight back into these wacky machines. <laughs> anyway, I'm Luke Mum No Computer, this is the Museum of Everything Else and yeah, have a, have a lovely time.